Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst songs by bands we love. I am the root. I am the progress. Rock -a like hot dogs, Franks and beans. I grew up in far sales queens. She wanna hear Weezer on replay for Pete's sake, do I look like I'm the DJ? For this list, we'll be looking at some terrible songs written by bands or artists otherwise known to make solid material. Which of these songs can you not take seriously? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Nightlife, Green Day. Taking a ride to my old haunts. Green Day has been a staple in rock music since the early 90s, and they've reinvented their sound multiple times over the years to great success. When you've been around for that long though, there are bound to be some duds in your catalog, and there's no better example of this than nightlife. With obnoxious vocal effects, awful sounding fake drums, and worst of all, the bizarre spoken verses by Lady Cobra. The entire vibe of this song is just so not Green Day. It's a good reminder of why some bands should just stay in their lane. She is my nightlife. Number 19, The Second Law, Unsustainable, Muse. This English rock band is one of those rare groups who could seemingly do no wrong, until they did. Muse has more than earned the right to do grand operatic things and experiment with different genres. We just wish they'd done them separately for this track. All natural and technological processes proceed in such, such a way the availability of the, the remaining energy decreases. The first part of this song sounds like the score for a bad fantasy film. It's followed by a section that sounds like a derivative throwaway attempt at dubstep that might be more at home with the tracks cut from Korn's 2011 dubstep infused The Path of Totality. <laughs> Things get a little better around the two minute mark when the vocals come in, and a balance is struck between the two sounds. But by then, it's far too late. Number 18, Pop is Dead, Radiohead. Nobody can tell Radiohead what to do, and for the most part, that's a good thing. The band has inspired legions of fans because they can write honest, catchy, and haunting tunes. They try to grow as musicians, and they're willing to experiment. Unfortunately, that last virtue can also be a bit of a curse, as proven by this song we'd sooner forget. Released just months after Creep, this standalone single is so off base for the band. We get that it embraced a poppy sound to provide a foundation for vocalist Tom York's criticism of the music industry, but satire only works when the product can also work in its own right. This satirical track just feels lazy. Number 17, Chinese Democracy, Guns N' Roses. There's a huge potential problem when an album you work on experiences a decade of delays. By the time it actually sees the light of day, many of its elements are going to feel painfully outdated both musically and lyrically. It's all about it. I'll get some for yourself. Chinese Democracy, the title track from Guns N' Roses' long overdue 2008 album, feels utterly lacking in identity and direction. It's at once derivative of what the band had already done before and awkwardly indebted to changing production styles in hard rock and metal. Axel's vocals sound weirdly processed, and you're unlikely to remember the chorus when the song ends. Considering how long we waited, we expected a lot more from the band who gave us Appetite for Destruction. Number 16, Get On Your Boots, U2. U2 are known for their strong lead singles, from With or Without You to Beautiful Day. So when they released Get On Your Boots as the first single from their 12th studio album, more than a few heads turned in confusion. Yeah. 
On the surface, it's an okay track, but there's nothing to really grab the listener, except a hook on par with a One Direction lyric and an overriding feeling that you two passed their prime a long time ago. I got a submarine, you got gasoline. I don't want to talk about wars between nations. In fairness to Bono, though, he doesn't sing the sexy boots line too often during live performances anymore. Even he understands he's not down with the kids enough to pull it off nowadays. Number 15, Young and Menace, Fall Out Boy. Evolve or die, that's the rule in the music industry. Sure, you can keep churning out the same sort of music, but that inevitably leads to dwindling sales and concerts where fans demand the older stuff. I woke up in my shoes again, but somewhere you exist After a hiatus, pop punk slash emo rockers Fall Out Boy embraced their natural pop inclinations and singer Patrick Stump's incredible range, and returned as a polished arena pop rock band to strong results. But when they came together for 2018's Mania, they went through a questionable evolution by exploring elements of electro pop. The roughest single that leans into the genre much too heavily was Young and Menace. This lackluster track feels too awkward and contrived to be a follow boy song. Number 14, Might As Well Get Juiced, The Rolling Stones. Taking some cues from U2's Actung Baby era by adding electronic elements to their critically acclaimed sound, the Rolling Stones didn't quite get as lucky with their change in sound. Mick Jagger's trademark snarl is toned down for this track and transformed into a more mild slur. It's just not as likable or as listenable. Might as well get juiced is a decent enough mantra, but it doesn't really demand remembering. It's a shoulder shrugger. We'll take it or most likely leave it. Number 13, Cruising California, Bumpin' in My Trunk, The Offspring. Is this a joke or a skit from SNL? Summertime, living's easy. Cruising, bumping my Huntington Beach cause the sun will shine. We have a good time. Unfortunately not. California pop punk rockers The Offspring has always brought element of comedy and satire into their music. And more often than not, it's worked pretty well. Just look at Pretty Fly for a White Guy. But whatever joke they were going for falls painfully flat in this happy-go-lucky wannabe mainstream summertime party anthem. I know you heard that bass bumping in my trunk, bumping in my trunk. We get that it's supposed to be an indictment of pop music, but if you're not watching the music video or know what the band's true intentions are, the song crumbles under the weight of its own unabashed poppiness and painfully derivative sound. Number 12, Mother, The Police. Taken from Synchronicity, which is the fifth, final, and probably most highly acclaimed record in the police's history, Mother severely divides opinion to this day. Well, the telephone is ringing. Is that my mother on the phone? Written by guitarist Andy Summers, it's a bizarre, slightly psychotic track, which some listeners label genius, but the majority brand garbage. Oh, mother dear, please listen and don't devour me. Supposedly inspired by Summer's own mother-son relationship, in which he felt pressure as a golden child, it screams for attention but doesn't really deserve it. It's an album filler we'd rather skip than suffer. Number 11, Ride My Rocket, Pantera. Let's be honest, we could have chosen pretty much any one of Pantera's songs from the early glam metal days for this list. However, Ride My Rocket from 1983's Metal Magic feels like a solid representation of everything we're happy that Pantera outgrew. Seeing as this was the band's first album, we can cut them a little slack because they were still finding their sound, but it's still hard to give them the benefit of the doubt when you listen to the generic, hairspray-infused rock sounds of Ride My Rocket, with the vocal stylings of original singer Terry Glaze. 
Judging by this song alone, it's almost impossible to believe that these musicians went on to pen metal anthems like Walk, Domination, or Cowboys from Hell. Number 10. Staying Power, Queen The first track and fourth single from Queen's much maligned 1982 album Hot Space, Staying Power signaled the beginning of a bad spell for the iconic band. Having had previous success with Another One Bites the Dust, the songs built around a misplaced belief in a new brand of disco rock, which never really caught on. Staying Power snaps fingers, sure, but it doesn't possess any of what its title talks of. Although the song's live performances are explosive, the track is utterly forgettable, and is a strange fit on an album that also features the classic Under Pressure. Got fire down below. I'm just a regular dynamo. Number 9. Wild Honey Pie, The Beatles Not even the most iconic band in the history of music is immune to misfires. Wild Honey Pie was written by McCartney while recording the White Album. By his own admission, this track was an experiment, and there's nothing wrong with taking risks, as long as you manage to contain whatever monster results from it. Rather than burying this song far from fans' ears, McCartney decided to include this weird, short, and piercing little ditty on the album. Apparently, one of the motivators for keeping it was that George Harrison's then-wife, Patty Boyd, appreciated it. After listening, we can safely say she's one of the few that did. Number 8. Bugs, Pearl Jam I got bugs. A song centered around an old accordion found by Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder at the thrift store, most fans would rather he never made that particular purchase. Waiting, waiting, bugs on my ceiling. Lyrically, the track tackles the lack of privacy, which comes as a byproduct of fame. The bugs are everywhere and inescapable. It's a good idea, but it's one hell of a strange song. The rhythmic grating sounds like a circus slowed down, but there's nothing funny, enjoyable, or even tolerable about the nearly three minutes of this track. Oh, see this around me, I see. See them deciding my fate. Bug infests our ears, and not in a grungy, grimy, or cool way either. Number 7. Let's put the X in sex. Kiss. If we had access to a time machine, we'd travel back to 1988 and stop this song from ever seeing the light of day. Even the most die-hard Kiss fans will acknowledge that between churning out one of their many iconic rock songs, the band has put out their fair share of forgettable filler tracks. Unfortunately, this song is too bad to forget. It occupies a strange space where it sounds like it would be a hit if it were performed by a different artist. But for Kiss, it totally misses the mark in the most spectacular and embarrassing way possible. The lyrics are cringeworthy. Although Kiss usually makes hordes of fans swoon, even they can't make this song sound remotely sexy. Number 6. Queen of the Supermarket, Bruce Springsteen with most records on today's countdown, there's at least a degree of divided opinion. With this record, there isn't. Where aisles and aisles of dreams await you. Widely panned by fans and critics alike, Queen of the Supermarket is literally about a lonely guy who's crushing on the cute girl at the local grocery store. It's so far away from Springsteen's usual rock-infused poeticism, it's a wonder nobody put the stoppers on it at some point during production. If you actually are in love with the cashier at your convenience store, then please, whatever you do, do not sing this to them. Number 5. The View, Metallica and Lou Reed 
When you've had a career as long and fruitful as Metallica's, you're bound to produce a few bad songs along the way. Case in point, the woefully underwhelming Saint Anger. While that song is mediocre, it's a platinum track compared to The View. I am a chorus of the voices that gather up the magnets. In the early 2010s, Metallica decided to team up with experimental art rock legend Lou Reed to create the sort of noise that truly upsets fans. I am the root. I am the progress. The Lulu album was a tough listening experience from start to finish, but its solitary single, The View, was a huge red flag that told fans to stay away from the rest of the album. Not only is The View absolutely grating, but it's also painfully boring. Number 4. Funky Man, D.D. King A founding member of arguably the most important punk band ever formed, D.D. King, more commonly known as D.D. Ramone, really should have stuck with what he knew. I'm a funky man, I got funky bones, I'm a funky man, my name is D.D. Ramone. In the late 80s, the Ramones bassist rebranded himself as D.D. King and branched out into rap and hip-hop music with this as his lead single. Funky Man is funky, but not in a good way. An autobiographical, rhythmless run through D.D.'s day-to-day -day life, it sounds like a very bad version of a Beastie Boys tribute act, and that's putting it kindly. I like hot dogs, franks and beans. I grew up in far sales, queens. You've got to fight for your right to avoid this one. Number 3. Can't Stop Partying Weezer featuring Lil Wayne you know that you really managed to create a perfect storm of disappointment when you upset the listeners of two separate musical acts. Co-written by Rivers Cuomo and Jermaine Dupri, Can't Stop Partying sees Weezer attempt to blend different genres. The sound is so super produced in a way that it robs the group of everything that makes their alt-rock sound so distinct. This direction also clashes with Cuomo's vocal style. Okay, bitches, Weezer and this Weezy, upside down MTV. But his mismatched vocals are miles better than Lil Wayne's verse, which despite the iconic rapper's substantial creative output, sounds totally phoned in. Was this song only written as an excuse to say the line, Weezer and it's Wheezy? Because that's the only good thing about the track. Number 2. My World, Guns N' Roses A song reportedly recorded by Axl Rose while under the influence of mushrooms, we find it hard to believe that even the most die-hard Guns N' Roses fan would suggest this is a good track. You want to step into my world? It's a social psychotic state of bliss! Use Your Illusion 2 is generally considered a classic hard rock album, marred only by My World, its dreadful final track. Oh, the line while you gasp for breath! You wanna talk to me? You wanna talk to me? Rose is undoubtedly an awesome frontman, but has a well publicized habit for leading GNR in the wrong direction every so often. And this dud is practically a roadmap of wrong directions. Want more mojo? Sound Mojo brings you music from new and emerging artists in all genres from across the globe. From interviews to live shows and deep dives into music culture, Sound Mojo has you covered. Be sure to check out Sound Mojo to find your new favorite artists. Number 1. Revolution 9. The Beatles. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. At 8 minutes and 22 seconds, Revolution 9 is the longest track that the Beatles ever released, and probably the most polarizing as well. <laughs> An avant-garde effort penned by John Lennon and heavily influenced by Yoko Ono, it's featured as the penultimate track on the White Album. 
Paul McCartney tried to persuade Lennon to drop it from the record as he was unimpressed, and popular opinion appears to fall that way as well. Eccentric enough to inspire conspiracy theories concerning Paul's death and to warrant treatment on The Simpsons, it was more weird than wonderful. Number eight. Uh. Number eight. Uh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.